welcome to another week of the news in Africa and the world beginning today September 14 2020 we open this chapter in Mali where divisions have intensified between Mali's military coup leaders and the opposition June 5 movement after the junta proposed that a military leader will oversee the 18-month transitional period the opposition coalition which took part in the three days meeting in a statement on Sunday rejected the roadmap and accused the military government of a desire to monopolize and confiscate power. It added that discussion had taken place against the backdrop of intimidation, anti-democratic and unfair practices worthy of another era. The West African regional bloc leaders, known as ECOWAS, has warned that by Tuesday the junta must designate a civilian leader to head a one-year transitional period or else the country will face further sanctions. Protesters in Libya amid growing anger have set fire to the eastern base government headquarters in the Libyan city of Benghazi over living conditions and corruption under the rule of military leader Khalifa Haftar. Protests in his eastern control Libya entered a third day over the weekend and had also broken out in al Bada, where the government was previously based in Shaba in the south and for the first time in Haftar's stronghold, witnesses reported. The country has been split into rival camps with parallel institutions in the east and the west since 2014. Several hundred protesters turned out in the eastern towns to demonstrate against the political elite and over deteriorating living conditions that include lengthy power cuts and a severe banking crisis. In Benghazi, the protesters, some armed with guns, set fire to the government building. The building was constructed after the Libyan National Army took control of Benghazi in 2017 after a campaign that left part of the port city in ruins. Meantime, an interim government allied with Libya's eastern-based renegade commander Khalifa Haftar has resigned amid the protest. to Angola, more than 100 protesters led by the Doctors' Union marched through the city centre in Luanda over the weekend to denounce what they call police brutality and demand an investigation into the suspicious death of a man detained in police custody after he was arrested for driving without a face mask on September 1. According to the police, the said man, known as Silvio Dalla, suffered a heart attack while he was in custody. Many Angolans are fed up as they aired their grievances and frustrations. Some tweeted and police brutality in Angola and provide justice for those killed, calling for an end to excessive use of lethal force by police. At the end of the march, which saw hundreds of demonstrators chanting and hanging visual displays of bloodstained medical garments, the Doctors Union President Adriano Manuel reiterated calls for clarity around the circumstances of Dallas' death. He vowed they will pursue their mission by taking the case to court this week, adding they have concrete proof that their colleague did not die of a heart attack. Moving out of the African continent, European Union leaders will discuss with Chinese President Xi Jinping this Monday, despite tensions over Hong Kong's freedom and Beijing's treatment of its Ugu minority. Those involved are Chinese officials, EU chiefs Charles Michel, Ursula von der Leyen, and German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who are to hold a video conference to replace a full summit with all 27 EU leaders cancelled because of the coronavirus. China says an investment deal already seven years in the making can be agreed this year but EU officials warned obstacles remain and insist they will not swallow unfavorable terms simply to cut a deal. Brussels want to reinforce respect for intellectual property to end obligations to transfer technology and to reduce subsidies for Chinese public enterprises. No major breakthrough is expected on Monday but EU hopes to persuade Z to give fresh political impetus to the talks and to allow his negotiators more room to compromise. Mm -hmm. 
In order to secure diplomatic ties, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visited Cyprus, calling on Turkey to desist from any activities that could further raise tensions in the eastern Mediterranean. Disputes between Ankara, Greece, and Cyprus are centered around hydrocarbon resources and maritime influence in the region that have led to fears of conflict. The U.S. is calling on all sides to back diplomacy, but as tensions rise, the Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos has announced plans to boost his country's defense forces, including the purchase of 18 French fighter jets, four frigates, and four Navy helicopters. In a move that might be seen as more conciliatory, Turkey confirmed on Sunday that a research vessel sent to the disputed zone in August has returned to the Turkish coast. The EU has threatened Turkey with sanctions unless it ceases unilateral actions in the disputed areas. An Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday announced a new nationwide lockdown will be imposed amid a stubborn surge in coronavirus cases. Beginning this Friday, schools, restaurants and hotels will shut down, among other businesses and Israelis will face restrictions on movement. The tightening of measures marked the second time Israel is being plunged into a lockdown after a lengthy shutdown in the spring. The lockdown will remain in place for at least three weeks at which point officials are expected to relax measures if numbers are seen declining. The country has had more than 150,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus and more than 1,100 deaths. The country is now seeing more than 4,000 daily cases of the virus being confirmed. That was it for today's edition of the news. Thanks for watching and do so again if you can. Until we meet, do take care and stay safe.